the Sunday evening. So a few major things I want to talk to you guys about. I've got about eight setups here on my list. And let me just do this real quick. All right. Um, All right, guys. So eight setups on my list that I want to cover you guys real quick just to kind of get us prepared and get you guys on the same page heading into the week that I'm on. One thing I really want to focus on, um, you know, as a team, as a focus trades group is I know a lot of you guys do enjoy the trade alerts, but what I would rather do is, you know, kind of share with you guys a lot more detail of what I'm seeing, what I'm thinking more so maybe lead you to the water and then you guys can decide when you want to throw casts and when you want to fish. You know, rather than me sending out trade alerts, there's a few of you who do have you know, that, that work ethic and that desire to take trading further. And those are the kinds of individuals that I'm more so interested in helping as we move forward as a team. So to get you guys on the same page with what I'm seeing and what I'm prepared for tomorrow. Now, of course, we could kind of go either way here in terms of the market this week. A lot of you know, different economic data coming out. We got the whole China trade war thing hanging over our head. One thing you know, that is working to our benefit here is that earnings, especially on you know, the big heavyweight names, are starting to dry up. Apple was pretty much you know, the last really important earnings announcement that we had in our way. Obviously, it didn't go too well for Apple, but despite Apple being down 7% on Friday, the spy and the queues actually looked pretty decent. You know, they didn't have super strong days, but they didn't kind of take that major hit that you would typically see when Apple itself is down, you know, five, six, seven percent. So we could go either way this week. We don't need to make predictions. Let's just focus on a few key setups and be prepared either which way. So those of you in the 10 week course right now, one thing we've been talking a lot about is the 200 day. So flip back to the SPY real quick. Just really important, guys, to always be mindful of where are we on the indexes. So shooting and just sitting just below the 200 here on the SPY, that's a level that you want to be mindful of. You know, one of two things could happen here with the, uh, with the SPY. You know, we could creep up here to the 200. It could become a level of resistance and push us backwards or the buyers regain control here in the market, we break above that 200 and things go that way. So let's just be mindful that we're sitting right under the 200 there. And then over here on the queues, we are just below the 200 as well. So this is trade number one, and it's really could possibly be two trades, but this is the first trade that I'm looking at here. It's just a potential play around the 200. So for those of you taking notes right now, guys, in my personal notebook, the way that I would title this trade is just, you know, QQQ 200 play. Simple as that. You write that in your notebook. Now you put a name on this trade. Two situations I'm looking for here. If the sellers kind of don't return tomorrow and this week, if the buyers take control, I'll be looking to go long the queues on a break above the 200. Now, obviously, we want to see the confirmation from the SPY, the big leaders, but if the queues break above that 200 on some strength, I'll be looking to buy some calls. Now, tomorrow is the 5th. I'll either play the 9th of November calls or the 16th of November calls. I'm not looking for a multi-week, multi-month move here. Rather, this is more so what I would expect here. We do break out of, I'm sorry, if we do break above the 200 here on the queues on some decent volume, I'm more so looking for a move like that, guys. One, two, three days, play those shorter term options. You're likely going to get a very nice return on those options and then book that profit and call it a day. Not that we like to make predictions, but it's probably a safe bet that the market isn't going to just rip and return to all time highs from here. So, that should go into the game planning. Not expecting a huge long duration move. I'm going to play the shorter term options. If the trade works, I'm going to get a bigger return. And that's something I'd be happy with. So that's one thing I'm looking for here. Two potential trades on the queues. 
we've got the potential breakout to the upside where I'll play those calls or if we break above that 200 and then reverse or if the 200 begins to act as resistance much like it did here on Friday you could look to just you know flip this trade on its ass and play it to the downside so this is a bigger picture trade I'm basing this off of the 200 that's what I suggest you guys take a look at as well even if you don't plan on physically trading the queues any trade you're likely to take this week is going to be dictated on which direction the market goes here. So even if you don't physically take this trade, whether the queues break above the 200 or they fade and get resisted by the 200, it's going to have an impact on your trades as well. So that's trade number one is the queues. The other trade, which will be you know, highly tied to the queues, as you can see, the charts are identical, is Amazon. Looking for the same thing here. We're either going to see strength coming into this week. Amazon sitting right at its 200 is going to do one of two things. Buyers take control and they're going to start to drive us away from the 200. With that being said, yes, Amazon is a more expensive stock. The options can be pretty expensive. So for those of you who may not have the capital appropriate to you know, put two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 into a single contract in Amazon, one way that you could play this is just by focusing on the, que on the queues like we just discussed. Amazon makes up a pretty good chunk of the queues. If this trade on Amazon works, the trade on the queues is going to work as well. So you can take the same move and take the same trade with much less exposure on the queues. But for those of you who may have the capital or may have the experience, this is a great potential move. So one of two things is going to happen here. We can break above the 200 on a move to the upside on the whole market. I'll look to buy some calls. And if we do get that breakout and I do take that position above the 200, this is just kind of a plain support and resistance trade. I'll then be looking for that 200 to act as support. And that being said, a break below the 200 would be my exit. So that's situation number one. We get a strong breakout above the 200 here, tomorrow, Tuesday, whenever it may be, I'll look to buy my calls and then I'm using that 200 as my stop. The second situation we could see here is just like the second situation in the queues where we either trade above a bit or we just get rejected by the 200. That then becomes a level of resistance and on weakness across the board throughout the whole market, we can then play Amazon to the downside using that 200 as resistance. If you were to take that trade and go short Amazon here below the 200, you would then obviously want to use the 200 as your exit to cover. So those are the first two trades, guys, the Qs and Amazon. They're pretty much going to be tied. If one of them is going to work, the other is going to work. So don't sweat yourself having the pony up for the expensive Amazon option. You can play the Qs just as easy. The third tech setup that I like here is NVIDIA. So you know, compared to most stocks, obviously we saw weakness across the board, but NVIDIA in particular really got its ass kicked. A big part of that was the weakness here in AMD. Obviously, they tanked on earnings. So what I'm looking for in NVIDIA is actually the same exact setup that took place here in AMD, which is the gap fill. A lot of you Focus Trades members, you're going to know about this already. Looking for this same setup here in NVIDIA. So AMD gap down, you identify the top of that gap there, and then you play the breakout on volume above that level. That's what I'm going to look for here in NVIDIA. Again, the success of these trades is going to be 100% dependent on which way the overall market goes. So make sure you use your trading checklist and take that big picture view. But that 224 level is going to be interesting for NVIDIA, not a big gap like AMD, but nonetheless, NVIDIA is a name that I would like to play to the upside. Here's a low risk, potentially high reward setup that we can apply to this opportunity. So again, not a huge gap, but I'll be looking for a nice breakout, fill this little bit level right here. And again, you're talking 224, 224, 10. Nothing crazy guys, not an insane setup. But again, if the market does move to the upside, all of these names are going to follow suit. It's just nice to pinpoint some low risk entries that we can take 
on those given names. So that's one level for NVIDIA that I plan to play should the overall market be supportive of that. So we got the Qs, we got Amazon and NVIDIA. In terms of finance, guys, the sector right now is a little bit messy. Gap down, gap up, kind of all over the place. With that being said, if money does rotate into financials, we want to have our hands in that. Again, if money goes into XLF, you can trade any individual name. If we had to pick one right now, again, not the prettiest gap fill setup, but clear level of resistance here at 110.90 on JP Morgan. You know, once, twice, three, four times in a row now, we've gotten rejected off of that level. Nice and simple setup here, guys. If money comes into XLF and you want to play that move and you want to follow the money into that group, here is a low risk, potentially high reward setup. Trade JP Morgan on the breakout of the resistance level that it's been fighting for the whole month of October. Not a crazy setup. This is really basic stuff, but all we're trying to do here is just pinpoint low risk, high reward setups that we can use should money work in our favor. So that's a nice and simple one there, JP Morgan. And then I like PayPal a lot right now. If the market does stabilize here, we want to pay attention to stocks that are hovering above or at their 200-day moving average. PayPal is a good example of that. It temporarily broke below its 200 last week. However, it made a hell of a gap back above the 200. And here's why this setup is interesting to me. Nice little rejection got pushed all the way down here on Friday and the buyers came in immediately at the 200. It's not a coincidence that that is the level where PayPal actually had its biggest bounce of the day on Friday. What this price action and what this bar right here is telling us is that most likely there was a good amount of orders to go long PayPal at that level. Things could change tomorrow. This thing could roll below the 200 and just get torn apart, but on Friday, Somebody with big pockets was respecting that 200 day. They were using that 200 day moving average in PayPal as their opportunity to accumulate shares. So this week, I'm going to have my eye on PayPal and see if we can stabilize around this level and see if the 200 day continues to act as a level of support. If it does, this is more so a trade guys where I'm looking to buy some calls and just give them a bit more time. Not necessarily looking for a rip or a breakout in the next few days, but again, we're at a really interesting moment in the market right now. A lot of leading stocks have fallen below a level which they rarely even visit, that being the 200 day. I'm not trying to call a market bottom right now. Nonetheless, should the market make a recovery from here, you want a shot at accumulating some of these stocks at their 200. So my suggestion is run through the bigger names and just look to identify a few names that are getting big bounces around the 200. You know, despite that one, two days trading below, PayPal has bounced, 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 and it seems to respect that 200. So if the market stabilizes, if PayPal can continue to hover along this level, I'll look to buy some options that probably have four, four weeks, you know, a month until expiration, I'm going to put on that position and then I'm going to forget it. And I won't do anything unless PayPal breaks below that 200. So this is more of a swing opportunity, just using that major moving average as your level of support and your potential exit. So that's one setup in PayPal, not the highest on my list. I'd rather put my capital into the names that are likely to make the most aggressive moves. But again, if the market kind of consolidates over the next few weeks and chills out, PayPal could be a pretty good opportunity. So we got the Qs, Amazon, NVIDIA, JP Morgan, PayPal. And then the last few setups I'm going to talk to you guys about is more so of a group move. So one of the bigger stories in the market over the past few months, up until recently, was the damage in China. So we got all this trade war crap going on right now between the US and China. I don't pay attention to any of the details of it. All I pay attention to is the charts and Chinese stocks across the board, as many of us know, have kind of gotten slaughtered. You know, Alibaba has gone from 210 
all the way down to, you know, as low as 130 a few days ago. And it's been a nasty group move. YY, Baba, Momo, pretty much any Chinese stock you can think of has gotten torn apart. So here's what you want to do, guys. The reason that they all made a bounce the other day was simply because Trump made some kind of comment about, you know, discussions with China moving along nicely. You know, just that little news blip caused in Baba alone 1.8 and then $1.6 billion of capital to return to the stock. So these names have been beaten down. And my best guess is that once these trade war, all these issues kind of clear out, once you make progress on that end, I would expect capital to come back to these names. Now, much like Apple and Amazon are the leaders in the tech world, Baba is most likely going to be the leader of this move. That seems to be the best name of the Chinese stocks. It's the one that the institutions trade the most. And for those of you who've been a member for the past year or so, we've killed Baba multiple times on some beautiful squeezes. So these are the three things that I would pay attention to should money return to the Chinese stocks. Now, this is going to be a move that will likely take place quick and will likely be news-driven an easy way to kind of stay on top of this would be one, just set some basic alerts on your charts. You know, whether you have TradeStation or Thinkorswim, set some simple price alerts. You know, if Baba starts ripping up here to 155, you're going to want to know. Just set some basic alerts. As silly as it sounds, another thing I suggest is follow President Trump on Twitter. Sounds silly, but should he come out and tweet something positive or tweet some kind of concrete, you know, deal or information or agreement regarding this whole trade war, you're going to want to be able to react quickly. We live in a day and age right now where our president not only communicates directly with us through Twitter, but everything he says has such a huge weighting on which way our market goes. So set some basic price alerts, follow the president on Twitter, and this is a move that is going to be news driven. May not happen this week, may not happen the rest of this year, but nonetheless, when these stocks do begin to recover and they go from oversold and begin to make a move to the upside, pay attention to Baba. And watching Mike Bellafiore's video this weekend, one of my mentors, he runs SMB Capital in New York. This is actually his suggestion, and here's how he's coaching his traders for this move. They're paying attention to the president, they're paying attention to the news. The way that they're going to play this move, and I find it really interesting, is they're going to do it three ways. Whenever this move breaks, I'm sorry, they're going to play it four ways. Whenever the China news comes out and whenever money returns to the Chinese stocks and returns to China, here's what they're going to do. For one, they're going to get a piece of an individual name. For them, and like I said, for most of the market, that name is going to be Baba. So Baba in this ugly little consolidation right now, Nice volume coming in. In terms of individual stocks on the China move, that's really all you need to pay attention to. If Baba moves, they're all going to move. It's as simple as that. So myself, as well as Mike and those guys, are paying attention to Baba. One thing that we're obviously familiar with as a team is buying a piece of the group. So when money returns to Chinese stocks, you can also consider buying the China ETF. One thing I want to look at is FXI. That's the iShares ETF for China. Again, pay attention to this and you're just looking to follow the money when it rushes into China. So you can get a piece of an individual stock like a Baba. You're going to want to get a piece of the larger basket. In this case, being China, we can use FXI. The third thing you would likely want a piece of whenever positive news or an agreement breaks out on this whole China deal is our market. Our market will likely pop on that news as well. Pay attention to the SPY. Nice and simple. You get positive news on this end. Chinese stocks are going to recover. The China ETF is going to recover. And it's likely to have a positive impact on our market as well, that being the SPY. And the fourth way that they're going to play it, and this is you know the one that I found most interesting that I didn't think of, is actually going short volatility. So it's their thought process that whenever positivity regarding 
the trade war with China comes out, whether it's an agreement or progress, whatever it may be, their thought process is that volatility is going to tank and return to, and return to normal. So what they're going to do is they're getting their piece of the individual stock, which obviously makes sense to me. They're getting their piece of the basket as a whole, which is my favorite way of trading, which again, we can focus on FXI. Buying a piece of our US market on this news makes sense as well. And then they're going to go short volatility, which I find really interesting. So there's a lot of different volatility products. There's the VIX, there's, you know, UVXY. These are just different things that you can play on this China move. I've never personally gone short volatility. To be honest with you, I've never really messed around going long volatility, but it's something at least interesting to monitor on this move. I'm not necessarily going to trade it just because I never have before, but in terms of breaking down the move, guys, and you know, taking our notes and being fully prepared, I'm going to actually, um, when I send out the recording of this video, I'll also send the link to the video that Mike put out, breaking down this whole China trade. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Mike Bellafiore, he runs a firm in New York. It's a proprietary trading firm where they train individual traders. And you know, these are dudes who are making one, two, five, ten, fifteen million dollars a year. Like true heavyweights, like literally making fortunes week after week in the market. And the conversation that we're having right now is very similar to what they do. You know, when the market closes or the weekend, you know, they're meeting up or they're doing their live streams, you know, and they're preparing for the China move just like this. You know, they're breaking down every aspect. They're creating a game plan so that when it does occur, they're just following their instructions. You know, they're putting together the play and then they're just executing on it. So that's why I'm excited to start doing these with you guys, hopefully Monday through Friday and then one time on Sunday because though it seems basic and though we're just looking through setups and taking notes here, this is the shit that the guys who are making seven figures, eight figures a year, this is what they're doing. You know, this in a nutshell is what trading is all about. A lot of people like to focus on the setups and the indicators and the scans and all that bullshit, but this is what it's about. You know, treating it like a business and taking this approach to it, you don't miss moves. You know, you're on top of everything. So quick little recap, guys, in terms of the setups that I'm paying attention to. First things first, keep an eye on the cues. Could go either way here. So two potential trades, break out above the 200. We're playing it to the long side on some short-term calls. That 200 acts as resistance. We fade below there and the whole market rolls Well, we can play the cues to the downside with some short-term puts. Amazon, which is likely to be the same exact move, same situation there. Above the 200, we can go long. Below the 200, we can look to go short. If we don't want to pony up for those pretty expensive options, trade the queues. JP Morgan, not the most exciting setup, but if money does rotate into finance, that's one stock and one level to potentially consider. We've got NVIDIA looking for a breakout on this little gap right here. Nice and simple. If it breaks out, you take your position and the trade either works or it doesn't. No emotion involved, no mystery involved. And then PayPal, that's kind of, you know, a quieter, potentially lamer setup. Again, just looking for low risk ways to put capital to work here. But the major focus for me, guys, I think, and for those of you who are going to be actively trading the next few weeks, let's be all over this China move. So take your bird's eye view, have a few charts, have a leading name in that group, such as Baba. Like we always do, let's keep our eye on the basket. In this case, FXI is one China ETF. And then again, the market should rally on positive news over there. And then for the sake of just observing, I'm going to watch volatility and see what happens to volatility should some positivity come out on the China end. So those are the setups I'm looking for heading into tomorrow, guys, per usual. I'll wake up early, I'll flip open the charts, and I'll shoot you guys a video in the morning, kind of, you know, getting ready just a little bit more. So go rest up, guys. Get some good sleep. I hope you all get up early tomorrow, ready to kick some ass. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some football. So 
have a good night guys and i'll talk to y'all soon and i'll send out this recording in a few minutes